Okay, uh, I'll open up a new drawing. So I don't know whether I can right click and close, right click and close, but uh, file and new. So basically I've got two drawings open now, so two tabs with two different drawings. I don't think that these are different pages, these are different uh, documents. So what I'm going to do, and the reason I opened up this is because this is my default template, which is a blank sheet, and then we'll create a new template based on uh, some basic parameters, and I'll show you how to control and organize the various content on different layers. So we'll be covering quite a lot of stuff in this shortish video. Um, so again, we'll be working through some of the options that we get in uh, these sort of windows or dialog boxes on the side. Now, a couple of things we need to do. Um, I've loaded up these two icons. We don't necessarily need to load them up, but if you do want to load icons up, click this drop down, add or remove buttons, and hit the customize bit, and then we've got commands. And under the arrange commands, down the bottom you've got object snap and grid snap. Okay, so you can drag these up to the line. Well, I don't want both of these things, so I could put the alternative one on. So that's basically what I've done. So I'll just um, drag these off to deselect them. And I can, you can add anything you want on this. But all these things are con sort of contained up on the toolbar anyway. It's just that this one is pretty, these are pretty useful to use. Now, grid snap, doesn't matter, regardless of whether you can see um, the grid or not, the grid for this document is set up to, under document settings, uh, 10 mil. Okay, and the subdivisions are two. If you wanted to show the grid just for the purposes of this, then we could. And I'll close that. You can print the grid as well if you want to. So what I'm going to do is create a rectangle, which is going to be uh, 10 mil in from the edge. Now you notice that the, if I zoom in, you can see sort of a 10 mil sort of start point at this. And if I choose my rectangle tool, then it should snap to that point. Um, grid snap is turned off, so I click that. It's now arranged and aligned, so the grid snap will now snap to this point, so I can click there. What I'm doing is drawing a rectangle, which is going to be 420 by 297, which is the size of an A3 sheet of paper, less sort of 20 mil. So I'm looking at 400 by 277. Now on the bottom of the, if I just click on that so I can see the whole thing. On the bottom of the layout tab, you see the dimensions box where you can input dimensions. So I'm not going to click anywhere. I'm just going to sort of let that hang and then go 400 in the X um, comma 277 enter. That gives me a rectangle that's sort of lined up at this point and then coming around to 277. So that's why it's sort of, I couldn't snap to the bottom grid because I'd end up with a 7 mil bit and a 10 mil bit in three other sides. Now you notice there's a white fill in the middle of this box. So what I want to do now is get rid of that white fill. So how do I go around doing that? If we go up to the shape style and the colors, then at the moment I've got fill and stroke on this sort of white color set to default. So if I create a color, a shape, I'll use that or I'll use this. I'm going to get this sort of edge and fill color, which is that and this. I'll just right uh, marquee select and delete those. If I want to get rid of the fill, then I have to select the object first and then untick that fill so I can now see the just the border without the fill. Notice that with the border turned off or the fill turned off, I click this edge, stroke is grayed out. You can't have a shape without a stroke and a fill because there's nothing to define anything. Okay, you can have a shape without, a, without an edge and with a fill, but you can't have a shape without either. So if I was then to create another one, I'll just show you what happens. It goes back to the fill and stroke. So if I wanted to create more objects without anything inside them, then before I create the object, I have to make sure I set the settings. I hope that's clear. So what I'm going to do now, I've still got um, grid snap turned on. I'm going to put sort of a... 50 mil box down this edge. I'll click on this, click into the corner, and then come over 50. And it's also kind of trying to snap to this edge as well. Okay, so 
What I don't want it to do is to just snap to this edge, because what happens if it snaps to that edge, that's the object snap, and it overrides the grid snap. Okay, so what I'm doing is just stopping it short on one of the grids, and then I can pull this down, and that's going to snap, because the object snaps overriding the grid snap, and that's going to snap to that point. Other things I am going to do, I put um, I could put a little logo in there if I wanted to. Um, I can put sort of a little color flash. Now again, objects now have been overridden, so if I wanted that to be in a specific position, turn off um, object snap, and I'm back to the default grid snap. Uh, maybe I'll go from there and down to there to put something in. You know, I'll put some information regarding the uh, date and name and project number, so I can select this, and I might as well just click and drag hold my finger on the control key and that's going to jump down and I need it to go to object snap so turn back on object snap and just drag this down to that edge okay so it's just a little bit of flicking between one and the other otherwise I'd have to go up to the arrange and flip down there so it's much better to have these things sorted out certainly when you're doing stuff like this then I'm going to click on this and I'm going to drag up finger on the control key make a copy and then I can go 3x and that will just put in three or four. If I wanted to put five X in, then that's going to create five of these things. And these are little boxes where you can put your name, your date, scales, notes, uh, where you can put your notes in here, or revisions, etc., etc. So I'm not going to necessarily sort of completely fill this in. What I will then do is show you how to insert an image. So you would go File and Insert, and then it gives you the option for insertable content. Okay raster images or absolutely everything and you would find the image or your company logo or something and you could pop that in to that thing there okay so cancel that so this is imagine we've put an image in we've put our brand logo we've put some extra bits and pieces on here um, we can then add some text to these things so up on the text box we can click on this and just again, one of these things, if you pre-format this before you actually click anywhere, then that's the sort of the formatting of the text you're going to keep. At the moment it's 10 point. I'd probably want to take this down to an 8 point. Um, I would change it because I like um, Arial rounded. So I'll go down to Air. And I click in there. So that's name. You could probably make it smaller as well if you wanted. So I could double click on that. And change that to maybe six. So just because it's not there doesn't mean to say it won't change down smaller. And then I can just click and drag that into that corner. If it snapped to that corner, I can then click and copy. So control, snap to that one, and then go 5x. That's going to take it all the way down. And I can double click one of these on change. these by double clicking and re-editing them so it's up to you what you put in there um, and once I've done all that and I'm happy with this I'll probably want to file document setup and unshow the grid and in the next video because I feel I've gone on quite along with this at the moment I'll then show you how to save this out as a template and make sure that it's the default template or one of the one of the templates that you decide to choose each time you load up your layout drawing.